These are some of the board games that I played this month. Crazy Words is a game where you're making up made up words. So you're doing that with little cardboard Scrabble type tiles, letters as vowels and consonants, and you'll be assigned a description for the round. So you might have to come up with a word for an Australian marsupial or a ski resort in the Alpine mountains. And you then have to use the letters that you've been given to come up with that. So it's quite tricky to um, use these letters in a way that you can describe what you want to, but without using any normal words, anything that's recognizable. It can't be based on any words that you know. So you're, I, I mean, God knows how we do these sorts of things, but I guess there's some deep thing within linguistics that would explain it, but it's, it's just fun. It's being, having to come up with something and then the way it works is everyone then guesses on whose word means what. So there's going to be in a four player game, there'll be six descriptions laid out and everyone's words, and you'll be secretly voting on what you think the other people's words were and then revealing. And so I had a game where I created the word Zucci, Z-U-C-I, and I was convinced that that meant a Roman emperor because I was thinking of Vini Vidi Vici, and everyone else was convinced that it was the name for a jelly bean flavor. And so there's a bit of fun there with kind of arguing with each other about why something means something or doesn't, but really, uh, I love the challenge of creating the words and also just the, the fun and humor of seeing other people's crazy words. And that's the name of the game. So I'm keeping this one. Uh, I think it's nice and it's got a cool little game in what is quite a small box. Shifty Eyed Spies is a party game that I've been wanting to try for ages. It's quite similar to a game that I love called Wink. And the reason for that is because you're winking in it. So uh, you will be assigned a another spy in the game so basically a color of another player in the game and a location on the table you've got these different locations so this is a fountain there's a bunch of others and you are trying to communicate to that spy and then they will then be communicating back to you so you are trying to wink at them whilst the game is going on everyone's just kind of taking their turns maybe drawing a new card or resolving their mission you're trying to wink at them, but without anyone spotting you, because if they spot you, they will intercept and they will steal the points from you. When you wink at the spy, they need to then shift their eyes, hence shifty-eyed spies, to the location where you're gonna meet to have this, this rendezvous. And so uh, you're trying to watch where their eyes go. So it, it kind of advances on wink, because not only do you have the winking, but you have the, the eye shifting towards locations, it adds this extra challenge to it. It's just great. I would highly, highly recommend this game. Unfortunately, it's, I think, impossible to get in the UK. I had to get it from Amazon.com. Um, but if you like the sound of, I just, I mean, it's just like Wink, really. Um, maybe a bit more of a better design game. And I love those games because you just start laughing because you're all trying to desperately do this thing in secret and you're all looking at each other so suspiciously. It's great. Um, that, um, will probably end up in a top 10 list and would deserve a seal of actual love for sure. Then you've got these three penny papers games. Uh, these are all roll and write games. So you've got a bit of paper and you've got three dice and every round everyone is using the same dice and then writing um, a number on the bit of paper. They work in different ways, they've got, there's got Skull Island, Valley of Wiracocha, and the Temple of Afikabu, and they have slightly different levels, so I would say that the temple is by far the easiest, then I would say Skull Island, and then the Valley one, and what I liked about these Roll and Write games is, first of all, I love Roll and Write games where you're using the same, um, dice because the game goes along really quickly there's no downtime you're always all deciding at the same time what i liked about this is that you could use one of the dice or add two together or add three together or add these two together and so you've got real decision making depth in terms of how you use your dice then of course you're deciding where to place it on your sheet um, and each game has a slightly different challenge uh, you've also got penny papers which um we always would shout penny papers when uh, she comes up because she allows you to write any number you want. So that's always kind of like a cool, like rolling a six. 
Um, each one has a green symbol that works in a different way depending on the map. Um, and then you've got these skull symbols and then mummies in other ones. And these are, this is the bit of the game that I don't really like. Um, they've, they've put this in to try and create interaction because what happens when you roll this symbol is the other dice are irrelevant. You swap papers, you shuffle them up, you swap them, and then you'll write a skull onto someone else's sheet. So it's a take that mechanism, really. You're damaging them, you're trying to give them minus points. And then later on you can try and kill those skulls or those mummies. So there is a way back for them. Um, I found the most frustrating thing about them was that really it just stopped the game. And this, this is a one in six chance of this coming up. Stops the game, you have to shuffle up the papers, pass them out. And there were times when this would come up and we literally just rolled the dice again because we just couldn't be bothered to deal with the skull again. Uh, so I'm afraid it lets down what are otherwise really interesting design roll and write games. I particularly like the Skull Island one where you are having to kind of do grid references and trying to find treasure, and so you ha it has an interesting spatial element. Um, the Valley of Wiracocha one, I would say, has a lot of different ways to make points. There's lots of different options, and where you go with that is, it, it definitely has a lot of decisions. Uh, but it, yeah, the, the, I'm afraid the, the red symbol on the dice just kind of let it down for me, so I won't be hanging on to penny papers. But if you really love roll and write games, and you wanna try, with, definitely with some interesting twists, then absolutely check those out. Legends of Andor is a cooperative game with a fantasy theme. It's very inspired by Lord of the Rings as far as I can tell. And this is an older game that I just wanted to try out. Uh, and I can understand why it's considered a classic and won a bunch of awards. It's a really tight design, very cleverly done. Um, it actually has a really clever tutorial uh, thing to it so you don't have to read the rules it teaches you as you go with cards this is probably one of the first games that tried that and it works pretty nicely in terms of setting up the game and learning it and you're basically different uh, adventurers like a wizard and a troll and stuff and you're roaming around and uh, not a troll a dwarf and you're roaming around and you're trying to fight the bad monsters and protect the castle. And there's a bit of story to it that I can appreciate, but it isn't, I wouldn't say a real story driven game. So you're rolling dice to attack them. And then there are certain things that will improve your strength. You need to collect money to buy weapons or improve your strength. And that's gonna mean that you're better in attacks. So it's really about doing things efficiently. It's one of those cooperative games that I would say doesn't really feel like it has loads of clever moves. Like you can't sort of think, oh, I'll do that, 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 and then that, like pandemic. There isn't loads of different ways to do something. There's generally like one optimal way to do something. Um, and I think really what I came away with this, I think that this would be a great family game, a great game to play with teenagers um, to get them into board gaming. And if you love that fantasy theme, it, it's definitely a really solid cooperative game, but it wasn't enough for me to kind of push in to, re to kind of be alongside Burgle Brothers or Pandemic or the cooperative games like Robinson Crusoe that I really love. It didn't have either enough story or enough interesting gameplay, but what it did have was like really solid and I could absolutely recommend that you try it if you like the look of it, because uh, I think it's a really interesting game that does it makes sense with a lot of the theme in terms of what you're doing. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't quite uh, enough to st stay around in my collection. That's Legends of Andor. So those are the games that I've played this month. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.